Joining us now is Anlin Gillian Daniel. Thank you so much for being here once again. You're welcome. Thank you for having me, Katie. So let's start off. Facilitating inclusivity has been very important to yes. your career. What made you gravitate toward that particular cause? Yeah, that is such a um, that's a big question. So. Um, I really believe that in order for us to learn new things, solve new problems, we need a real diversity of perspectives. We need people with different backgrounds and identities to all come to the table. And I noticed in my work that we were kind of seeing the same people over and over again, and I wanted to find a way to bring more people into the kind of work that we were doing. Um, but I also wanted them to feel like they belonged in those spaces. I wanted them to feel psychologically safe, physically safe, comfortable, so that they could be themselves. Because I think sometimes we bring people into those spaces, but then we try to make them be like everyone else, and then you lose all of that amazing perspective that they bring. So that's one of the reasons it's been really important to me and something I've been trying to work on for the last probably five or six years. Nice. And your upcoming article is all about informal science education. Yes, it is. Uh, so what is this and why is this so valuable to underserved audiences? Um, that's a great question. Oh, first of all, I think it's important to everybody. So um, we really think about education as something that we, we do in school. We do, you know, we have K-12 and then mm -hmm. we're kind of done, maybe college. Um, but the truth is that a majority of our learning happens outside of the classroom. And so informal education, informal science education, is any type of content people choose to engage in. So they make the choice. So it could be science museums, aquariums, articles they read, um, events that they go to, projects that they do on their own. How do we broaden who feels like informal education is for them? And I think when people start to think about learning as something that happens over their entire lives, that that's just valuable for all of us. We want everyone to be an engaged learner throughout their entire lives. So springboarding off of that, why do STEM educators need to be flexible when they're developing outreach efforts? Um, so I've been doing uh, informal science education and outreach for about 12 years. And I can honestly say that I have never had two events go exactly the same. Um, so you didn't, the thing about informal science education is people are choosing to come and talk to you. And you don't know who those people are going to be. You don't know what they know when they come to the table. You don't know what they're interested in. So to be very flexible um, about adapting the content, the activity, and what you're saying to people. So sometimes we get little tiny kids and we have to make sure we only hand them things that are safe. Sometimes we get, I had an eight-year-old once who had memorized the entire periodic table. Wow. That com I know, right? <laughs> that conversation is very different. And so you need to be very flexible when someone comes to talk to you to find out where they're at and what they care about. And then you take the activity and the learning from that point forward. Um, also, sometimes the environment is very different than you thought it was going to be. And maybe you thought you'd have electricity and you don't, or you thought you'd have water, or you were in, thought you were outside and you're inside, and you have to adapt and be able to um, lead whatever you have in that space. So why is collaboration with audience experts such a vital piece of this puzzle? You kind of touched on it a little bit there. Um, so I think that, you know, when we're thinking about this idea of diversity and inclusion, it, um, it answers sort of the question about perspective. You can only have your own perspective, right? So there are audiences I just don't understand because I'm not part of that group. And so by collaborating with people who are experts on particular audiences, you can be just so much more effective. Very cool. Anne, Lynn, Gillian, Daniel, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.